What makes a perfume season? What's the difference between designer and niche perfumes? Top notes, base notes, heart notes, what are those? Okay, so what is the difference between a toilet, a perfume, and a cologne? What's the best location on my body to spray my perfume? If you've ever been unsure about any of these questions, I am a champion. So keep watching. My name is Emerald C, and on my channel, you'll find fragrance reviews and so much more. much much needed information that is essential to your you know perfume journey so first thing we're going to discuss in today's video will be designer versus niche we hear that a lot we're going to go into the detail of that as well as fragrance concentration so the different concentrations of all of the fragrances day and night versus seasonal perfumes that are out there and also how to wear your perfumes or colognes parfums whatever fragrance you're wearing correctly first up designer versus niche we'll begin with designer so when we think of designer fragrances we think of dior chanel burbank versace that whole line of big box names that everyone knows you can go in any department store any Saks, nordstrom macy's any store that's around you that's a big name store ulta sephora and you can find a lot of these designer names here right so these are more of the designer names now they have a set price and they can be found very easily because again they're everywhere niche on the other hand it's more exclusive these niche fragrances they differ from the designer fragrances because they are sold directly from the creators of set perfume and the fragrances so there's not a huge manufacturer that sells a whole bunch of them like worldwide niche it's a little bit more difficult to get your hands on a niche fragrance now their price varies tremendously because they usually use higher end higher quality of fragrance and essential oils and things that they include within their fragrance so of course they're going to be higher so if you find a designer fragrance or perfume for maybe 150 let's just go with 150 for a niche fragrance you're probably going to pay 500 600 two thousand dollars you're going to pay on the higher end for a niche fragrance now the great thing about a niche fragrance is that they have a very unique line of fragrances and they cannot normally be found in these traditional you know stores that you buy the designer fragrances from some niche brands that you may be familiar with could be creed or homage and i mean the list continues to go on it's very rare that you can actually find them in one of the big box like traditional stores they're very very rare because again they're usually sold from the manufacturer the creator of set fragrance fragrance and fragrance concentration so let's first understand what fragrances are and then discuss the different types of concentration there are and how they play a part in our perfumes and the selection of our perfumes colognes and all that good stuff we have right so what are fragrances let's start there fragrances are a combination of synthetic or natural aromas that give perfumes their specific scent so in a perfume it's a combination of those oils that may be synthetic or natural mixed in with ethanol alcohol so the concentration of oil that is higher in the perfume the more expensive and the higher quality the perfume should be now the four different types of concentration are eau de cologne eau de toilette eau de parfum and parfum which let's chat about the first one eau de cologne so that usually has about a 5% concentration, anywhere between 2 to 5% concentration of the natural or synthetic oils that gives this cologne its scent. Now, it's normally marketed towards men, and it is a lighter scent. So this is great if you want something that doesn't last long, but you want like a quick mister or a spray. So normally this lasts anywhere between 4 to 6 hours depending on how much you spray, your points that you're spraying it on your body, and so on. Eau de Toilette. 
So the Eau de Toilette is a bit stronger than the cologne. It does last longer. It has anywhere between 5 to 15% of the fragrance oil in there. So of course it is stronger. Though it is traditionally a lighter scent, it's stronger than the previous one, of course. Now this one lasts anywhere between six to 10 hours. This is EDT, you'll see that abbreviation, EDT, Eau de Toilette. So when you see it, that's exactly what that means. So this is great if you want to try a new scent or a scent that you don't want to commit to the higher price point because a toilet can also be found in a parfum, which of course will last longer than a toilet. So this is great if you don't wanna go into that big higher price point value. And again, if you want something lighter that doesn't last as long so you can layer the fragrance, or if you're halfway through the day and you wanna swap it out for something else, that's a great alternative. Eau de Parfum. All right, so this is where it starts getting serious, okay? Because the concentration for this is anywhere between 15 to 20% of the essential fragrance, natural synthetic oils that are in here. So this right here is definitely going to pack a punch. So this of course is stronger than the toilet and the cologne, but not as strong as a parfum, which we'll get to. Now this fragrance can last, I wanna say up to 12 hours. So it will last for quite some time and it's more potent, but, not as strong as the parfum. Now the parfum, this is the real hitter, okay? This is why. It has 20 to 30, and some even have up to 40% of fragrance, essential, synthetic oils in there. So this right here is what's gonna pack a punch. You're gonna be able to smell you, and you're gonna be able to smell you for over 12 hours, especially if you get something that really, really packs a punch from a quality you know, brand. So the parfum, this is where it's at. So if you want something richer, complex, long lasting, the parfum is definitely the way to go. These will last quite some time and you honestly don't need to spray as much as you would with some of the lighter aromas or with the less concentration of our fragrance oils in the previous perfume. How to wear your perfume correctly. So I know you're probably listening like, how do you not know how to wear your perfume correctly? I'm going to go through just a few tips that may, just may change how you incorporate your perfume or fragrance, whatever you're wearing going forward. So let's jump into how to wear our perfume correctly. So first things first, you want to spray it on the skin because the oils that are naturally within the fragrance, the perfume that you're wearing, they interact with the warmth and your body temperature. So it's important to actually spray it on your skin. And I'll get into it a moment on the locations as far as where you spray onto your skin. But for now, you wanna make sure you focus on spraying your perfume directly onto your skin. Now, when you spray your perfume on your skin, you're not holding the bottle right on your neck. You're not gonna hold it just a couple of inches away. You wanna make sure you hold it anywhere between six to eight inches away from your body so that once it falls onto your skin, it stays there and you wanna allow it to dry. So don't spray it on and then hurry up and put on a shirt or lift up your shirt and then spray it and then drop the shirt on top. You wanna allow that perfume to dry before you put on any clothing or if you're spraying while you're wearing clothing, just spray away from the clothing. Now, can you add it to your clothing? Absolutely, we'll get to that too. But for now, let's focus on spraying our perfume on our skin. Do not rub fragrance on your skin. I repeat, do not, do not rub fragrance on your skin. Now, I know it gets really tempting once you spray your perfume to dab it just like this or dab it around your neck and stuff, don't. Do not touch it, let it, breathe you must let it breathe now if you have like a roller ball or one of the fragrances that don't have a spray mister then of course you're going to dab it onto your skin but you're not going to roll it around you're not going to beat it up you want to be gentle okay you want to treat it like a daisy treat your fragrance nice so once you spray it onto your skin just allow it to breathe now a lot of people have told before like you got to rub it in don't do that do not do that now, the reason being is it compromises the integrity of the fragrance notes. Because keep in mind, you get the different notes at the different times. So the first set of notes you get are pretty much your top notes, then your secondary notes, and then your base notes. Now, if you go ahead and dab or rub your fragrance in, you smush it around, you're going to kill those top notes and you're going to definitely severely affect the middle notes. So they're not going to be able to produce 
as well as they would if you allowed everything to breathe. So if you have floral notes in there and you move it around and warm it up before, it loses its crispness. Crisp Ness. It, move, it removes the crispness, the boldness of that fragrance. So you have to allow your fragrance to breathe. The best time to put on your fragrance is right after you have taken like a fresh shower. One, you're clean. All right. So let's just start there. <laughs> and two, it allows it to best absorb into your skin. So how you apply it once out the shower, of course, you dry off, allow yourself to, you know, towel dry, air dry, whatever you do. You want to dry off. After you dry off, you can go ahead and put on um, your moisturizer, your body lotion, whatever you decide that you want to moisturize your skin with. The best type to moisturize your skin with is something that's like unscented so that your fragrance that you're wearing doesn't have to compete with the fragrance that you have in your natural moisturizer, whatever moisturizer you're using. So again, if you can get something unscented, fine. And if not, then get something that's really subtle that won't interact. Spraying perfume on your clothes. Should I do it? Should I not do it? I don't know. My clothes got in the way. It got missed it. Now we're here and I smell good. Should I spray my clothing with perfume? All right. So that's a little tricky if we're being honest. If you spray perfume on your clothes, of course, it's going to smell freaking amazing all day long. And probably the next time if you decide to wear that outfit again. Okay. So it'll still have that aroma. The only downside to spraying your clothes is that if you're using something with a higher concentration of oil, it is oil. Think about when you get oil on your clothes, it leaves oil marks, oil splotches, and that can be very difficult to get out unless you have a little clothing oil remover or something like that. Of course you can do that, but you definitely want to avoid that. So if you're wearing dark clothes and you're misting, you might be all right, okay? But if you're wearing something light or something sheer or something a little bit thinner and you miss and it has a higher concentration of oil, you're gonna get those oil marks on that outfit. So it's a double-edged sword. It's up to you how you want to do that. If you want longevity in the scent, it's definitely gonna last a while. But do you care about your clothes? Can you get away with spraying it on that outfit and it not leave marks? Totally up to you. Do not shake your perfume bottle, okay? Sometimes it gets tempting like, I just wanna shake it and activate the scent. Do not shake your perfume. Please do not shake it, I'm begging you. Oxygen is not your friend when it comes to fragrance. Keep in mind, when you're using your fragrance, you want to keep it, you want to store it in a dark, cool place. You don't want it in some place that has high humidity or any place that's too warm. It will compromise, compromise the integrity of your fragrance. Even if you keep it in its, in its box and you keep that box in a cooler place that doesn't get too hot, then that would be perfect. What is a good location to put my perfume? Like everyone does it differently. I've seen people spray the whole body. I've seen people spray and then walk through. And spraying and walking through, that works if you want like a lighter scent or just like a lighter mist. But if you want something that's potent, it's gonna last a while, working on your pressure points work. So one of the locations that you can put perfume is referring to your post points or right at your ears. So right by your ears, that works as a good pulse point to place your perfume. You can also put it on your neck, which is, I think, the traditional place that I don't know if, you know, men do it too. I was going to say, I don't know if men do it. Then I think my fiance, I'm like, no, he does the exact same thing too. So also placing it on your neck, which is my favorite part, because once you hug someone, you know, face, neck, they're all close. And you that's when you can really smell someone. You go, oh my God, you smell good. So ears, neck, chest. This is it. This is such a nice place to spray it six to eight inches. Miss that baby. Inner elbow. Though I know it's not a common place that people think like, all right, I'm going to miss my inner elbow. Yes, that's another place you could put it. Your wrist, of course, which is the traditional, one of the traditional locations. I'm like, we grew up dabbing it onto our wrist. The back of the knees. Now, no one's going to really be in the back of your knees. But again, if we're thinking about the post point and things like that um back of the knees work as well as your ankles now you may say why all of these locations these are locations where your body heats up when your body heats up it heats that oil in the fragrance and that's what really produces more of a bigger bowl scent so once you get warmer in those points that's when you're able to release and open unlock that fragrance and really smell you seasonal aromas day and night aromas is there a difference can i just wear 
a summer fragrance in the winter. Can I just wear a winter fragrance in the summer? Why can't I wear a night fragrance in the daytime? All right, so these are all questions you probably have thought of or maybe you've never thought of and said, I wear this all the time and it's not an issue. Did you know that weather does affect how your perfume comes out? It can intensify or it can do the complete polar opposite. Here's why. Think about it. In the summertime, right? In the summertime, it is very hot. So when you're spraying on a perfume, you're going to sweat. Inevitably, it's the summertime. You're going to get hot. You're going to sweat. Your temperature is going to be higher. Now, because of that, when you sweat, the molecules from the oils and everything, they evaporate off of your skin. And they're going to evaporate at a quicker rate than they would in the wintertime when it's colder and it takes longer for you to warm up and the molecules to actually evaporate. So it's going to definitely be a difference. Now, keep in mind, if you spray something in the wintertime on your skin and you're out and about because it is cooler, right, you're going to think that the scent is more subtle when it's not. Now you can wear the exact same aroma in the summertime and it's going to intensify because it is warmer and it's going to really pack a punch then because of the temperature. So this definitely shows that the temperature does play a huge factor in your perfume selection and the notes that you have in that perfume that you're choosing. Daytime, spring, summer fragrances, they all kind of fall under the same thing because keep in mind the main factor here is the temperature. So of course, naturally the temperature in the daytime is going to be a lot warmer than it would at night. During the summer, in spring the fragrances you want to wear are fresh light crisp aromas right so you want to have something that has aquatic notes something that may have like orange or blossom citrus you want to have fragrances that are like that because they are lighter now what do you wear during the winter months or the fall or the evening so fragrances that are super exotic, sexy, sensual, they're usually the fragrances that have oak moss, amber, musk, vetiver. They're that whole line of fragrances. They are really good for the evening. Why? Because they're loud. They're very loud. They're very potent and you can smell them. You cannot mistake any of them. You can smell them very well. Now, if you wear them in the daytime, they're going to be too much because, again, these are heavier, thicker aromas. So in the daytime, it can knock you out just a little bit. But in the evening, it is perfect. It is the perfect evening, fall, winter fragrance. These notes and these fragrances, especially like the cold weather fragrances, they stick around longer because, again, it's cooler out and it takes longer for them to evaporate from your skin because it's not warm, you're not sweating, you're not hot. So it takes a long time for them to evaporate. So they'll stay around a while and you'll be able to smell them very well too. For instance, my Burberry Black. This is probably one of my favorite fragrances that I have to date. I've had it for quite some time and I absolutely love it. Now the notes in here are amber, patchouli, there are additional notes, but those are pretty much the base notes. So let's just focus on them because the base notes do linger the longest. This one is a great evening, fall or winter fragrance. So when you think seasonal, this would go in that category. So it is a very sensual, sexy, seductive aroma. And this is exactly what it looks like here. And what does that say on the back? Okay. It says, please be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. I need you to subscribe. If you have not already this far in this video, I'm going to need you to double back and I'm going to need you to subscribe. Fragrance notes. So you'll notice usually like a pyramid within each fragrance. And I know depending on what company you're buying them from, they may display them differently. But all of them essentially tell you, even if it's not like the pictures of the fragrance, they'll have the names of the notes. So it'll say top notes, middle notes, or heart notes, kind of same thing, and then the base notes. So the top notes are what you smell first. It is your first impression of the perfume. So if the top note is peach, peach is what you're gonna smell first and it evaporates first too so in the evaporation process the peach may evaporate literally within minutes it may last up to 10 20 minutes it doesn't last that long it's a short-lived thing middle notes or heart notes so these notes occur they present themselves once the top notes have evaporated so once they evaporate you get the middle notes now it can last an hour it can last a couple of hours but it is short-lived not as short as the top notes but it is about an hour, a couple hours, or within that time frame. 
they give the fragrance like a nice, well-rounded aroma. And usually there are two to three, depending on how complex the fragrance is, it may be even more than that, where it's layered with different variations of florals or citruses and things of that nature. Base notes. So your base notes are what you smell last and they last the longest on you. It is the last to evaporate. So it will sit on your skin for six hours or more. So those fragrances that say they last all day, 10 hours, the base notes are what you're going to smell the most of it. And lots of the base notes, they have the common aroma of like musk, amber, and so on. But those are some of the more commonly base notes. Now, depending on what your fragrance is, definitely look through and check out and see, okay, do I want to smell like out of here all day? Do I want to smell like most or in Broxen? Do I want to have these aromas? So that's something to kind of keep in mind when you're selecting a fragrance hope you really enjoyed this video and you found it informative. And if there's any questions you have, I would love to make an additional or a new video for it because I need you to know everything there is that I know and more about fragrances and I love learning new things. So again, I would love for you to subscribe, show me a little love, and I hope to see you in the next video. Toodaloo, my love.